For decades, the Honda Civic held a near-top position of any compact car list. And it's a favorite among shoppers and for really good reasons. With its historically non-reliability, spacious and well-built interior, and its fuel-efficient but lively four-cylinder engines. And I've been driving the 2017 model for 10 days now. Come with me, let's see, does it still deserve to be one of the top in its class? I really like the new design of the Honda Civic, specifically this low hood and these elevated wheel arches that give the car a sportier look, especially when I knew that this car is actually wider, longer and lower than the previous model. And on this version that we have with us today, it has really nice looking daytime running lights, LED turn signals on the door mirrors and it comes with 16 inch alloys. But the best thing I like about the new Civic design is at the back. I love the brave choice that Honda made with the backlights by making them into like these curved lines around the car instead of using the standard rectangular shape. But on the other hand, I really don't know why they had the choice of choosing this part to be fully in chrome and I wish they stuck to the glossy black we find on the Honda Civic SI. From the inside, the design is pretty simple, yet the build is really solid and reminds me of that Honda reliability. I really like the design, especially with a lot of spaces around the car to give you more practicality. Here in the middle, on the doors, right here in the bottom. And I really like that this specific space that they made for your mobile phone with special places you can thread through your cable to charge the phone from this USB port right here in the back. The seating position is really low and feels sporty and to give more to that sporty feel they've used a digital speedometer in a shape of a round screen in the middle of your rev meter. And what I really like about the design the LED gauges they used for the engine temperature and the fuel gauge that resemble the lights, the shape of the lights in the back. The equipment level we get on this version of the car is moderate, although it's the highest trim you get with the 1.6 engine. So what do we have? You get keyless entry, remote ignition, push button to start the car, a regular sound system with Bluetooth and automatic climate control, you have electrical parking brake with the option to brake hold, which you have to turn on every time you switch on the car for some reason. And then you have buttons to control that audio system and Bluetooth on the steering wheel. On the other side, buttons for your cruise control. In the back, the space is really decent and I had no trouble dropping off my kids to school every day. But I think an adult will suffer from the headspace in the back, especially with the sloping roof. And at the back, we get rear parking sensors that give you warnings through the screen. I wish Honda added a camera for that though. The car we're testing today is powered by a 1.6 four-cylinder engine that produces 123 horsepower and 151 newton meters of torque. And it transmits that power to the wheels through a CVT or a continuous variable transmission gearbox. Let me start up with what the good things you get out of this setup. Fuel efficiency is really high. I've been driving the car for 10 days in the city and I managed to get 10.2 liters for every 100 kilometers. That's a really good number. The steering wheel feels really sharp, but it lacks a bit of feedback, which you don't actually need in this car. 
And I found the suspension to be really good, even on some bumpy roads. But for city driving, it's perfect. But here are some issues I found with, while driving this car. When you accelerate, and the CVT pushes the engine to rev really high and sticks to that revolution. It's at 4,500 RPM now and it's not going down. And when you're accelerating, you hear two distinct sounds. The sound of the engine revving really high and at the same time, you get a specific sound coming from the CVT itself that really only resembled an electricity generating turbine to me. And there's one more issue I noticed in the car while driving. When braking from speeds above 80 kilometers an hour, you're going to feel a shake in the brake pedal every time you do that. Let's hear that sound again. Go. stuck at 6,000 rpm for more than 8 seconds, 10 seconds, now it changes. Sometimes I miss those regular transmissions. With its well-known reliability, the Honda Civic will always be a top choice in its class. But now in the market, it faces tough competition with the likes of the Toyota Corolla, Nissan Sentra, Mazda 3, Hyundai Elantra and Kia Cerato. Here's my advice to you. Before you decide on buying one of the versions of the Honda Civic, like the one we have today that will cost you around 65,900 dirhams, go to the showroom and try to test drive all the three different options of engines you have. The 1.6, the 2.0, and the most powerful of all, the 1.5 turbo. And go into details of the specifications you're getting with each of these engines. And then you can really decide. See you in the next episode. Bye-bye.